Hello friends, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and welcome to another Java Swing video tutorial. We're going to take a bit of a break from looking at the Java Swing layout managers. We'll get back to those in later episodes. But today I'd like to take a look at one of the basic Java Swing control classes and that is the J button. So let's get started. I've already created a new Java Swing project in Eclipse. This is our standard project. We have the launcher that simply creates a new instance of our mainframe class and runs that in the event dispatch thread. The mainframe class creates a new JFrame, sets the title and the default close operation and the initial size, sets the location relative to null to have it centered on your screen, creates a new J panel and adds that to the center area of our border layout and then shows the J frame. Running at this point shows that we will have a blank window which is composed of our J frame and our J panel. For those of you who may be interested, I'm going to post a copy of this project code to GitHub and I will leave a link in the description below. So let's create a J button. We're going to configure quite a few elements of the J button. So I'm going to put all of that configuration code for the J button in its own method. And that method I'm going to call create button. Now I've already defined a private instance variable of type J button. So I'll simply use that variable button equals create button. And now I'll use Eclipse to actually create the method for me. So we have a private method with a return type of J button called create button. And I'm going to say instead of return null, just return button, which I will create in just a moment. So J button button equals new J button. And then return the J button. In order to make that visible, I'm going to add it to our J panel. So panel dot add button. At this point, you can see that we have not added any text to the button. We have not added any graphic or icon to the button. So all we should have is an empty button on our screen. So let's run it and take a look. And there it is very small button with no content, but you can press on it and it does function. So let's go back at this point now and change how we created that button and add some text to the button. So let's say I wanted this to be a button that when clicked would print something to our printer. I'm just going to add the text print. And now when we run that, we'll get a button with the word print. Now you'll see that since this is the only control that's on the screen, it gets the initial focus, which is this small dotted line box around the word prints, showing us that this control currently has the focus. Now we can remove that by making the button not focusable. Button dot set focusable false. We run, and now that little box around the button text has been removed. So it's not focused at this point, but we can still click on it and it still does function. So we can have a button that's completely empty or void of text and graphic. We can have a button that has text. We can also have a button that has a text and a graphic. So let's add a graphic to our button. Now I have an icon that I have created and saved in our project folder called print.png and that is the graphic that I'm going to use for the button icon. Image icon, print icon equals new image icon. And the name of the image file, print.png. And now we will set the icon on the button. Let's run. And now you'll see that we have the icon that is 
a printer, and the word print. So we have the graphic icon and the text on our button. We can also change the gap between our graphic and our text on our button by using the method set icon text gap. And that expects an integer. So for example, if we were to say 10 being 10 pixels and we'll run, we should now see a little bit wider of a gap between the graphic and the text. We can add a mnemonic to our button so that we can use the keyboard to simulate the pressing of the button with a key combination. Key event dot virtual key, and I'm going to use the letter P. Run, and now you should see that the letter P is underlined, meaning that that is the mnemonic or the accelerator for this button. If now we hold down the Alt key and click the letter P, you'll see that that mnemonic key actually simulates the pressing of the button. We can set some tooltip text. And now when we hover over the button, we'll see that there's a tooltip and there's some awesome text for the print button. We can also change the font for the button. A new font. We'll use the constructor that allows us to enter a name for the font and the style and the size. So I'm going to use Arial, font.plane, and a size of 16 pixels. You'll see that it's bigger. Let's make it big enough so that you can see a dramatic difference. Let's put it up to 24. And now we have big print on our button. We can also set the button margin to give us some space between the edges of the button and the text in the graphic. We create a new insets object, which has values for the top, right, bottom, and left of the control that we're creating the margins around, in this case, our button. So I'm going to use 10 all the way around. 10, 10, 10, and 10. We'll run. And now you see that we have 10 pixels, extra space, margin all the way around the button. We can also add an action listener to our button so that the button can actually do something useful when we press it. Button dot add action listener, new action listener. I'm going to create that as an anonymous inner class. I'm going to import the action listener class and then add the unimplemented method which is the action performed method. This is the method that will be executed when someone presses on our print button. And I'm just going to do a sys out to our console. Print button has been clicked. And run. And now when we click on our print button, you should see down in the system console, the message print button has been clicked. So the action listener provides behavior for the button. We can also programmatically enable or disable the button. So we set enabled true or false. Set enabled true means the button is enabled. Setting enabled to false means the button is disabled. The default is enabled, so let's set it to false. Run. Now you see that the button should be disabled, and we're unable to click on it. Comment that. We can also, if the need ever arises, programmatically generate the button click. 
button dot do click. Now running the program, we will see down in the system console the message print button has been clicked before we ever click on the button with our mouse because we've generated programmatically that button click. And there we have it. Button has been clicked. And that happened because we executed the do click method of the JButton class. We can also change the alignment and positioning of the graphic and the text on our button. So let's look at how we would place the text below the icon. Button dot set. We'll start with the vertical. We're going to change the horizontal and vertical text position. Vertical text position. And we're going to use some static integers from the swing constants class. So for the vertical text position, we'll put that on the bottom of the button. And we're going to center the text horizontally. Swing constants again. Dot center. And now when we run the program, we should see that the text is centered horizontally, but below the print icon. And you can change the positioning by playing with those two methods, the set vertical text position and the set horizontal text position. I'll just show you one other example. And for this one, we're going to place the text to the left of the button. Let's copy these. Comment the originals. And now we will set the vertical text position to the center and the horizontal position to the left. Run the program. And now you'll see that the text is to the left of the print icon. Another thing I'd like to show you is how you can set the preferred size of the button. Button dot set preferred size new dimension. And in the dimension object, we set the width and the height. So say, for example, just to be exaggerated, let's make it 200 pixels wide by 75 pixels high. We'll organize our imports to import the dimension class and run the program. And there we see a much bigger button, which is now 200 pixels in width by 75 pixels in height. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any future content when I release new videos. Thanks so much for hanging out with me again today. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.